London, the city with endless opportunities, with over 7,500 rough sleepers alone on the London streets. What are the factors that are contributing to the increase? There's a lot of statistical evidence to show that rough sleeping in particular is increasing, as are all forms of homelessness. Well, if things continue as they are, I think, if anything, they're going to get worse. I think it's a disgraceful attack on affordable housing of all types. But one, of the, one of the key drivers of people being on the street is the government's welfare. We spoke to Shirley, who shared her story on how she became homeless. Um, well, I became... I, was, I became homeless um, about seven years ago. I was in a full-time job. I was a palliative care nurse. Um, things spiralled for um, reasons I can't really say at the minute. But um, anyway, I ended up losing my job and I ended up losing my flat that came with my job. From then, I returned from Orpington back down to South London, where I stayed with my family for a while. Um, while I tried to get back onto the housing scheme, which there was no avail. I couldn't, I, I mean, I was being told that for someone in my position, my age, no dependents, the waiting list would be six or seven years. Um, I was told that, you know, that if I didn't have a medical condition, I wasn't mentally ill, I was stable, that it could be longer. Um, so that's how it all started. Yeah. Um, and then I obviously started living with my family, um, bidded for like six years and didn't get an inkling, never even got offered to look at a flat. Um, and by the fourth year, my mental state um, started to go, started to deteriorate. Um, at that time, there wasn't much help for, well, I don't even know if there still is, there wasn't much help for people who become homeless through no situation or no fault of their own. Um, you had to fit, fall into a category. So I think you was an ex-offender or you was, um, had problems with drugs or drink. That could be easily established. But if you were someone who just felt on hard times through changes, um, then you had nowhere to go. We spoke to Lynn Vickery, senior housing lecturer, who shared her views well, I mean, it's a very contentious uh, story, the story of uh, housing needs in London, so there are many different views on it. Um, but no one can dispute the fact that London is a growing city. It's growing with younger people, with single people, and the research shows that that's been going on for some time and will continue to, to, to grow, uh, and everybody needs somewhere to live. Therefore, uh, the prices for where those homes are going to be are going to go up because there's not enough land there's not enough building and of course affordability is a huge problem um, so it's all about supply and demand really in London um, uh, the demand is going to continue to grow uh, and we haven't kept, kept pace with that growth. Andrew Jones economist expert shared his views on the economic climate. In terms of the housing market uh, we saw quite a dramatic collapse in the private house building sector, which of course added to the overall housing shortage, which had been building up for some time. Um, and we also saw a drop in house prices, which didn't exactly help matters. But this fall in house prices was relatively short-lived, especially in London, which recovered earlier than other parts of the country. Um, in London, rents and house prices started recovering around about uh, 2010, 2011, and have since been growing very strongly. To be honest with you, it got to the stage where uh, a certain time, a certain point came where I was, I'd been going to the housing, I'd been going to keep up all these appointments, um, even going to look for like private sector, where, the, where you could get social funding for it, but only X amount of money. Speaking to councillor Philip Glanville, he gave us his thoughts on the increase in rents in London. So uh, you said, does it do anything about private sector rents? No, it doesn't. You know, there, there is an opportunity, you know, they've cut social housing rents by 1% year on year for four years because they've recognised for some parts of the country, uh, social housing rents have gone up higher than private rents. But in London, it's been the opposite. You're seeing social housing rents 
ca uh, cap to inflation plus one percent, and then private sector rents going up ten percent a year, uh, and it does nothing about that. And that's fueling the housing benefits bill. It's fueling homelessness, and it's making it unaffordable for people in the middle as well. So it does nothing about that. It does some stuff on standards in the private rented sector, about rogue and banned landlords, and some positive stuff in there, giving councils some databases that they can use to do better enforcement. But on the fundamentals around private rented, it doesn't do anything about affordability or security. So you still face people on six month or yearly contracts and then rent reviews, and that's why people end up homeless. Because I just think that, that the, the policy is not to do that. There's so many other people out there that do need help. There's so much different ways of um, how to fall. I think there's about four or five different categories about where you fall in to be homeless. Mm. But when you fall in to be homeless, when you have got a good job or had a good job and you haven't been on the radar of having any mental problems or any physical problems, and you, then you just walk in. Like, it's like, where did you come from? Who are you? Yeah. Um, and to some degree, I don't think a lot of people believe it. Labour spokesman Tom Copley shared his political view on the current housing climate. Well, we need the mayor to invest more in services for people who are sleeping rough. And we've had a major issue recently with, because council budgets have been so pressured, um, we've been losing, we've been, we've, we've been losing um, hostel bed spaces, uh, across London, uh, we've been losing support services for people that are homeless, and it's getting more difficult for councils um, to to house people. Uh, even for families where they have a statutory duty, uh, it's becoming more difficult. And you know, for single people who are homeless, uh, it's even more difficult. Um, I think the recession has only affected homelessness insofar as it's affected the housing crisis. Uh, which has as, as its root cause uh, an insufficient supply of housing. But um, I, that's how I started. And I started educating myself. I started finding out, like going to centres, and I started finding out what is really out there, um, not just for my age group or my, or my background, but, you know, what is really, really out there and um, from there, I just became um, more determined again. I think I had enough of it, you know, it's been four or five years now. And I just started, I weren't gonna accept no. So I just started, um, one of the things that I started to do was started to go back to do voluntary work. Because I think that that helps your, your state of mind. You don't feel so much useless. You feel like you've got something to give back. Um, and always mingling, talking to people, yeah. finding out what's out there. You'll be amazed that someone can say to you, oh, you, know, you can go on the road and there's something down there. Yeah. Um, so education of what the system has to offer yeah. was one of the things. And keeping myself proactivated, yeah. having my mind in a good place rather than every day focusing on the fact that should I be sitting in the park? Yeah. Should I go and get a beer and start drinking? Yeah. Another day like this. Yeah. Um, I just said no. Um, and that's, that, was the, that, that was the turning point. Conservative councillor Antonia Cox shared her views. Well, you know, you've got a fundamental problem that not enough housing has been built and the, the population is expanding incredibly fast and, you know, it will be 10 million in London by 2030 and there's you know there's not a there's not huge amounts of land available subject to what i was saying about some of the council owned land in southwark i hope that developers and builders will build more to meet that demand because it's there you can do it you don't have to build on green fields i think the mistakes that were made in the past in the 1960s were people built tall towers that had all sorts of problems, you know, young families got marooned at the top when the lifts broke down, and then there was a lot of space around. It was the kind of Le Corbusier model, that you had a tall tower and you had a lot of space around it. That didn't actually create enough housing. And it's much better to build at higher density, but lower rise, um, so people are closer to their neighbours, they don't get problems when the lifts break, and you get a better environment. And I think if we'd built better in the 1960s, we wouldn't have quite such a problem now, but we need to learn those lessons in, 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 in what we build in future. Yeah. So I'm back on my feet a lot, 
and um, and that's thanks to there is a lot of support out there. But you have to be you have to be honest with yourself, and you have to be honest with people going to help you. You can't be saying yeah I'm doing this and you're not going to do it. You have to be proactive. People can help you. You get a lot of support people, but unless you do the initial work. Mm. Um, you know, remain positive, look after yourself, keep up your appointments. And, you know, it is hard. You do get fed up because, you know, not having anywhere to live, it's just a, it's a, it's a mental drain. Mm. Um, even when you're living in a hostel and you're living amongst people that you don't know, mm. you're sharing a bathroom. It's so private. Yeah. Yeah, people rowing and fighting and the police are in and that. You're thinking, you know, are, am I still homeless? But you're yeah. still, you're safer. And you just gotta wait it out. You just gotta, you just gotta say, you know, don't give up. I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Trust me. Trust me. (laughs) I've got a career again, um, which really every day gets me up, keeps me going, back on track. So it's never too late. Yeah. Um, And no matter how, mine was seven years, and I'm sure some people have been out there longer than me. But don't give up. Um, Don't be, you know, start believing in yourself. Be positive. And keep on, keep on, don't accept no. You know, you are, you are a person. You deserve that right. Um, just keep plodding on.